Sorry, Tess. I know what a good friend Henry was to you. He is. I have to believe he's still alive. I have a prepared statement from the president I'd like to read to you. At 3 a.m. this morning, Eastern Standard Time, Henry Dodds, Correspondent for CNS News became the third journalist to be taken hostage by Peruvian guerrillas. Dodds was abducted outside the city of Lima. According to eyewitness reports, a bloody shootout injured several innocent bystanders. It is also believed that Dodds may have been struck by the gunfire. As of this hour, U.S. authorities have no further information on Henry Dodds' whereabouts or the demands of his captors. Bernie, could the Sendero Luminoso uh, be responsible? I repeat, at this point, we have had no contact with anyone making claims to be responsible for the action. But, Mr. Secretary, are there any plans to negotiate for Henry's release? You're all well aware that this administration's policy is one of strict refusal to negotiate with terrorists. I understand that this hits you people particularly hard, since Henry is a colleague. All 
three journalists have been colleagues. What kind of action is the president planning to secure Dodd's release? Will it be uh, military, diplomatic? I'm not at liberty to discuss that at this time. Has he been contacted by a representative of the rebel faction? No. Then why are the lights on in the Oval Office at 4 a.m.? Maybe he can't sleep. Oh. Richard. Where are we in government? Are they He's in contact lying. with the kidnappers? He's just doing his job. It's not known at this time, but they've assured us of... How do I look? 23. You've been saying that for six years. Maybe that's why you never asked for another cameraman. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. The news coming out of the White House about this morning's kidnapping of Henry Dodds in Peru is sketchy at best. White House officials are maintaining a tight lid on this newest turn of events, continuing to stand by the U.S. policy of non-negotiation. The climate, however, grows increasingly tense around the White House, as it did during the two previous kidnappings of American journalists, which ended tragically with their first. Those of us who have worked with Henry Dodds can only hope the fact that the president was at his desk early this morning bodes well for his fate. Tess O'Brien, CNS News, the White House. Good job. Thanks. You and Henry go way back, huh? Yeah, we sure do. He gave me my first break as an overseas correspondent. And he introduced me to Peter. Speaking of Peter, how you two doing? <laughs> missing each other. Yeah, you two just can't seem to land in the same city, can you? Tell me about it. I'm in Chicago, Peter's in Paris. I finally get to Paris, <laughs> they ship him off to Los Angeles. I land the White House assignment, and he gets a permanent job in London. I mean, we can't win. Well, it's, it's going to be pretty fantastic when you do get together. I can't imagine what you're talking about. Okay, <laughs> lens Good to see you guys working so hard. You kidding me? We're keeping our minds shut. We're still having sevens fish. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. I really appreciate your help. Hello. Alan. Hey, I got good news, and I've got great news. The great news is the old man wants you at headquarters here tomorrow for a meeting. Take the early shuttle. I smell anchor person. Are you kidding me? I don't joke about this, Alan. Tess, your contract's up in nine months. I've already let it be known that the other networks are interested. We're talking money, big money. So tomorrow, we're going to go in there, and we are going to promise them everything, and we're going to sign nothing. Now, you ready for the good news? Oh, no, 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 no. No, I, I can't do that. What do you mean she starts today? Ah. What's the matter? Ah, the network's sending up a field reporter from the Virginia affiliate, and I'm supposed to help her learn the ropes. What's the big deal? You've mentored young reporters lots of times. Oh, well, sure, but this is terrible timing. With Henry's story breaking, I have to be on top of it every minute. So you'll have an extra pair of eyes and ears. Unless, of course, they send you one of the hairsprayed helmets who majored in communications. You got it. An ex-beauty queen. <laughs> I was a homecoming queen. Do I qualify? sitting here with Tess O'Brien. I mean, we studied you in my journalism class. I want to listen, I want to learn, I want to know everything you know. Maybe she'd like your autograph. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just really excited. Of course you are, of course you are. Now, why don't you tell us something about yourself? Where are you from? How'd you get started? You really want to hear my bio? Oh, we're absolutely on pins and needles. 
Well, I was born in Virginia. My daddy was a farmer. Both he and Mama were alcoholic. I'm not ashamed to talk about it. It inspired me to make something of myself. And I vowed that I wouldn't be all day about it either. Anyway, when they died, I was raised by Mama's oldest friend, Viola Hubble. I worked hard in school, and I won a college scholarship. Well, yeah. you've made great leaps already. And now, from Virginia, field reporter to the White House. No, I couldn't be more thrilled. No, no. What we're trying to ask, in a slightly refined way, is who do you know that made that happen? <laughs> I see. Well, I may have made a most concerted effort to erase my accent, but I do most desperately depend on my southern charm. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it when that child talks, I hear Atlanta burning in the background? Oh, she's harmless enough. Do either of you happen to know of a nice, inexpensive hotel around here? Don't you have a place to stay? Well, I got called up here on such short notice. I'll just check the yellow pages. Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's too late to go traipsing around Washington looking for a room. You can stay with me. Oh, no, I couldn't have posed like that. I'd be way too embarrassed. If you're going to make it in this town, drop embarrassed from your vocabulary. Come on in. Thank you. Ooh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You can stay in here. Here we go. <laughs> Baseball? Are these yours? Oh, no. <laughs> they belong to my son, Andrew. Where is he staying? Oh, he's all grown up. He lives across town. He's an architect. You have a grown son. I don't believe it. Bless you. Well, I'm going into New York early tomorrow, so you might as well sleep in. Hmm? Oh, no, I have to get up early, too. I want to find an apartment. Good night. Sleep tight. Good night. Oh, thank you, Bill. It's good to be here. Uh, Alan, you know William Hanlon, the Certainly president of our do. network, and Brad Duggan, Hi, head of our Brad. news division. Good to see you, Alan. Melody's been doing local news in Richmond. She's a gutsy young woman, and I admire that. So when she told me she was Henry Dodd's niece, His I His niece? Melody is Henry's niece? That's right. Well, she never said anything to me about that. Well, she didn't want to trade on public sympathy. She specifically asked me to downplay it. Well, I understand. Bill... Is there anything we can do? Well, I've spoken with the State Department several times. They're adamant that we let them handle it. And we're all concerned about Henry's safety test. You know that. In the light of the situation, uh, hiring Melody seemed the least we could do for Henry after all the years he's given to this network. And she might just come up with some personal insights, a unique slant to the story. She does have a good, solid journalism background. She has covered hard news stories. Everybody she's ever worked with has had nothing but good things to say about her. Well, Tess has certainly built up a reputation for herself in the industry by lending a helping hand to young women starting out. I can see why you called on her. Well, then that's settled, and I'm on a very tight schedule this morning, so perhaps we can get down to brass tacks? That is a substantial raise and an extension on your four-year contract. What about the anchor? Crookshank's been anchoring the nightly news for 12 years, and every year for the past six years, he comes in and tells me he wants to step down. Well, what if this year he means it? You know damn well I want his job, and I deserve it. The wording reads, when Crookshank steps down, you are the first to be considered. This time it's backed up by a salary hike. How hiked? Try doubled. Doubled? Doubled. That's how much we think of you. So what do you say? We need a little time to think about it, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Look, Tess, we know the other networks are romancing you, but their anchor chairs aren't going to clear for a decade. At least here you have a shot. A damn good shot.
your day. Andrew? That's right. Have we met? I'm Melody Shepherd. I've just been assigned to the White House and haven't found an apartment yet. Your mother was gracious enough to let me stay with her. Oh, I've got to check the oven. Excuse me. How are you? Better all the time, having met your new roommate. Tess, I know I'm not supposed to still be here. Ah, don't worry about it. Finding an apartment in this town can be a murder. Ooh, I knew I smelled lamb. I called Christine. She said it's your favorite. Oh, Melody, you shouldn't have gone to all this trouble. Honey, how's the Hampshire Avenue project coming along? Well, by the time I'm done, they ought to name the building after me. Oh, after only two years with the firm, that's mighty high hopes. Well, I'm like my mother. Shoot for the top. <laughs> Tess, I'm drawing you a bath. It'll be ready in five minutes. Oh, great idea. While you relax, I'm going to pick up another bottle of wine. Tess, can I ask you something? Sure. These throw pillows. <laughs> oh, my mother made them. All the qualities admirable in a correspondent and unattractive in a daughter is the way she put it. Oh, great. <laughs> now I have something to strive for. <laughs> you know, Melody, I know Henry is your uncle. But I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am. Well, it's all the family I've got. Well, you, you just have to believe that he's going to come through this all right. I have a feeling about this one. I, I don't like talking about it. I don't want people feeling sorry for me. Yeah. Yes? It's me. I'll leave this towel here for you. I warmed it by the fire so it's nice and toasty. Oh, thank you. Did I die and go to heaven? known I was coming. I didn't know myself till yesterday. Supposed to be a surprise. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I didn't introduce you. Melody Shepard, this is Peter Chambers. Peter, Melody. It's very nice to meet you, my dear. Though, uh, I suppose, in a manner of speaking, we've uh, already met. It's my pleasure, Mr. Chambers. I've long admired your work. Really? You hardly look old enough to have long done anything, my dear. Oh, well, it's Peter, please. Seriously, you've had a real influence on my career. I've never forgotten your interview with Marcos when he refused to answer one of your questions. You said to him, the waters of telling too much or telling too little are equally dangerous. You can drown in both. He knew right away how bad he looked. They completely turned the interview around. Does this girl know her stuff or what? <laughs> how are you? All right, nice to see you. This girl's been in Washington 24 hours and no one's offered to show her the sights. I can fix that. I'll get my coat. <laughs> Are you in town long? I know. A uh, quick overnight. I'm on my way to Chicago. You gonna do it? You're really gonna write that book? Well, I'm talking with the publisher. Well, I gather you two won't mind if we make ourselves scarce. So, the 
Did you miss me? Hmm, I'm going to show you just how much. <laughs> so, you really did miss me. Hmm. It's time you start taking me at my word. How's Fiona? Uh, she's 18. I know how old your daughter is. I mean, how is she? Well, she adores the university and has fallen madly in love. And there begins the sordid tale. Hmm. I gather you're not ready for a son-in-law, hmm? He's a performance artist. Well, that sounds exciting. Oh, do you think so? Hmm. Mm. He uses his body as his canvas, and on the inside of both of his arms, he's tattooed the evolution of the frog, from mere tadpole to full-fledged adulthood. <laughs> well, you're kidding. I wish I were. <laughs> oh, my God. What? The lamb. <gasps> Warm enough? Next to you, I am. See that string of lights stretched out along there? Uh-huh. It's Embassy Row. Those are some of the most incredible old buildings in Washington. I love to hear you talk about this city. You make it so exciting. I love its architecture. It's a blend of the old and the new. That's what makes designing buildings in this city such a challenge. Keeping the balance between yesterday and tomorrow. I love your energy. I'm sure you'll make a brilliant architect. An artist needs inspiration. Keep it up, Melody. You're doing fine. Enough mint jelly and you'll almost remember this is supposed to be lamb. <laughs> but I feel terrible after Melody went to so much trouble. <laughs> you know, she doesn't want to make it public, but Melody is Henry Dodd's niece. That's oh, funny. I've known Henry for over 20 years. He never spoke of a niece. Hmm. Huh. So, tell me, are you still terrorizing high-level government officials with guilty consciences? <laughs> I had an audience with the Wizard of Oz today. You saw old man Hanlon in person? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he does exist. Oh, does he exist? They're doubling my salary. Oh, I'm very happy for you, Tess. Well, then what's the matter? Well, <clears throat> I don't exactly know how to tell you this, but um, in all our time together, we've never really discussed how I'd feel about this. About what? Well, I'm sorry, but I absolutely cannot handle loving a woman who makes more money than I do. Peter! <laughs> Oh, you're not a devil. You're a devil. <laughs> Congratulations, darling. I am very proud of you. <laughs> Peter, it isn't only the money. They're giving me first consideration for the anchor chair. I mean, they've practically promised me that it's mine. Don't you ever tire of us being like two ships passing in the night? Oh, well, Peter, you've always said it goes with the territory. Yes, I know, but doesn't it bother you? Of course it does. You know it does. But what are you getting at? Well, somehow I'd hoped, after all these years of juggling schedules and two short rendezvous, that um, we'd both want the same thing. You know, to be together. Mm. Can't you feel it, Andrew? Can't you practically smell it? It's like an aphrodisiac. The sheer power of this town. I can feel it pulsing right through me. I can't think of a more exciting place to be in the whole world than right here. Damn. What's wrong? Well, you've only been in Washington one day, and already you've caught the bug. Caught what? What this town calls atomic fever. Falling in love with the power of politics. It's a very progressive disease, too. <laughs> May I have your 
attention, please. The sky cap is needed at the information booth located in the east terminal. I'll see you in a couple of weeks on your way back to London. You got a date? Oh. I wish we could grab more than a day together here and there. So, relocate to London. So, and relocate to Washington. Maybe we can compromise. What's this? It's a thought, a whole new thought. Gonna miss you. Transair flight 233 from York, now arriving at gate 54. Good morning. Liberation Party. I beg the President and the Government of the United States to come to their senses and not be an unwitting pawn to the oppressive regime currently trampling the ideals and freedoms of the Peruvian citizens. Henry's obviously As being threatened. It's not how he talks, he's, he's given a script. I have seen firsthand the ramifications of the United States using this small South American country to promote its capitalistic goals and ideology. It is time, Mr. President, to admit the error of your ways so that the people of Peru can be free. Is ready for your stand up. You're cutting it awfully close. I know, I know. I, I, I'm still waiting for Secretary Miller to return my phone call. Can you use a quote from him? How on earth did you get the Secretary of State to talk to you? Honey, when a gal sends a fellow a basket of homemade cornbread and put up peach preserves, if he's any kind of gentleman at all, he's going to phone her up to thank her. You did. I did. <laughs> Go on, tell Diaz I'll be there. You've got eight minutes. Mm. This is Tess O'Brien. Is Secretary Miller there? He's on his way to the White House, thanks. Sorry, O'Brien, this is off limits, no press. Aw, oh, give me a break, Hal. Aren't you cutting it kind of tight? You're almost on the air. Well, yeah, you're right, but I... If you take one more step, I'm gonna have to write you up and file it with the press secretary. It's a matter of principle. Oh, matter of principle? Well, my conscience tells me that I'd better file a report on you, because I know for a fact that you and my cameraman smoked pot together in college. Mr. Secretary. Uh, since none of the other hostage journalists were forced to read prepared statements on videotape, does the administration see this as a positive sign that the guerrillas are willing to negotiate for Henry Dodd's release? Three, two... This is Melody Shepard with the CNS Special Report live from the White House. We were just fooling around. You have two minutes. Behind you, behind I'm sorry. I, I I just got this great quote, and I I thought you were already on the air. I 
I really am sorry. Don't be. You're right. I shouldn't have been playing around. I should have been out looking for an apartment. I really overstayed my. Well, don't be silly. Stay as long as you like. I haven't seen this much of Andrew since he was twelve. Como se no en la cinta. Sonó fantastic. SOS locates better. I think you got a future in this business. You're fluent in Spanish. See, top of the class. about everything there is to know about you, right down to the number of fillings in your teeth. Ma, oh. don't embarrass Andrew. <laughs> so where's Harold? Harold? Oh, Katie, he was eons ago. Oh, good. He was tiresome. He was a bookkeeper, wasn't he? He was a CPA. Same thing. Hey, Grandma, remember me? I sure do. You're the fellow who throws a fit if he doesn't get birthday cake with a rose in the icing. I feel like I'm 10 years old. Of course. Why else come home? Oh, come see the cake. It's chocolate. Oh, chocolate. This kind of weather makes me fantasize about bundling up with someone and getting lost in the woods. Well, how about fantasizing about bundling up all your things and moving in with me? Oh, Andrew, we haven't known each other long enough. That's exactly my point. What better way to get to know each other? Someone who is special to me, a very happy birthday. Oh, for Melody! Yeah. Yay. Nice. Yeah. Let's yeah. see. It doesn't shake. Oh, you'll love oh, it. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's a bracelet. Yeah. A bracelet. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, Ooh. Oh, how pretty. Ah. Look at that. <laughs> All the qualities admirable in a correspondent and unattractive in a daughter. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. O'Brien, I hope you don't mind. It's just that it's so hard to get something for someone who has everything. Mm -hmm. Well, this is something you can really get a lot of use out of. This is from me. Let's see what this is. I hope you like it. Ooh, you like it? Oh, beautiful. That is. Ooh. Are you going to model it, Mom? Oh, I will. For Peter. <laughs> Are we to have the pleasure of Peter's company anytime soon? Oh, yes. He'll be in town next week for the reception at the British Embassy. You're going to that reception? Mm hmm. That sounds like a big deal. Hmm. Well, let's just say that some journalists walk around with their noses stuck up in the air, swearing that it would compromise their integrity to socialize with the people they cover. But just let one of those white starched envelopes show up in their mailboxes and everybody's scruples fly right out the window. Surely after all your years in the White House, this can't be your first invitation to an embassy reception. Well, as a matter of fact, I did get one just last year. For the king of Tonga. Oh, <laughs> you should talk. You were so jealous you tried to tag along as my date. <laughs> as I said, everybody's scruples fly right out the window. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mom. So you really like this girl, do you? She's pretty terrific. Is it serious? Could be. Andrew, I know the difference between a woman looking at a man and a woman looking at something behind the man. Now, what on earth could she possibly be looking at behind me? You see, Grandma, you don't have an answer. You don't like Melody, do you? I didn't say that. Well, you don't have to. I saw that eyebrow go up out there. And you think when I was dating, I didn't see that hooded look every time I brought home somebody you didn't like? 
<laughs> you didn't listen to me then, and you probably won't listen to me now. Ah, oh, don't be silly, Mom. Of course I won't. <laughs> oh, honey, I'm so glad I lived long enough for us to be friends. Oh, <laughs> so am I. Oh, I'll get it. Hello. Oh, God. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll leave right away. They're threatening to execute Henry Dodds. I have a brief statement to make. The guerrillas have withdrawn their 48-hour execution deadline on Henry Dodds. Yeah. However, however, they have made it quite clear, unless their demands are met, the threat to execute Dodds remains very real. Are they making any new demands? I'm not taking any questions. Thank you. To whom are they making these demands? The president? And his media area? A third country. Why didn't he take any questions? He's stonewalling us. Come on, I've got an idea. No luck, he's a regular. How can you tell? Well, limousines that are in and out of here on a daily basis have a permanent White House license plate. Anybody without those official plates has to get a clearance, and that happens once in a blue moon. Wouldn't this be easier if we moved a little closer? Oh, absolutely. Well, let's move up. Well, you see, a good journalist is part detective and part psychologist. What we're doing here right now is the detective work. But the psychologist in us tells us that if the White House doesn't like our tactics, they might have us audited for the past five years just to prove their point. And considering the White House doesn't want us to know any more than what Bernie Robbins just spoon-fed us... Uh, we'll, we'll stay, stay right, right back right. here. <laughs> huh. Blue Moon. LT-527. May I have the number, please, for the Department of Motor Vehicles? Thank you. Yes. I hope you can help me. My car was just sideswiped by a speeding limousine. But fortunately, I got his license number. No. No, no, it, it's not bad enough to make a police report. But I really think he ought to pay the hundred dollars for my taillight, don't you? Yeah, well, I, I'd appreciate it if you'd tell me who it's registered to. The license number is LT-527. Right. Yes, I'll hold. Thanks. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Executive Limousine Service, 8742 J Street. Thank you. Thank you very much. If it's somebody from the Peruvian Embassy, why didn't they just use a regular embassy limo? <laughs> because it probably isn't somebody from the Peruvian Embassy. You got to play detective. Let me play psychologist. Be my guest.
Hi. Hi. I sure hope you can help me. I sure hope I can, too. Well, it's my mother's birthday Saturday, and I just saw something that will absolutely make her day. I passed one of your limos in traffic, and if you can believe it, the initials and the day and month of her birthday were on the license. Do you believe it? We aim to please. <laughs> the license was LT527. Will it be available this weekend? Let's take a look. Okay. Well, Matahari, what'd you find out? Uh, all I could get was a name. I was reading the file upside down. Tomasa Murillo. No address. That's good enough. <laughs> and to think you did all that without put-up peach preserves. <laughs> I've got a friend who can check him out. Oh, let's go. Uh, no, he works for an investigative agency, and I'm afraid he'll only do it as a favor to me. Oh, can't you tell him I'm new with soon as... sorry. No problem. I've got an apartment I want to look at anyway. I'll catch up with you later. T-O-M-A-S-A-M-U-R-I-L-L-O. How do you want to cross-reference him? Try, uh, prominent people, Peru. Mr. Duggan's office. This is Melody Shepard calling. Hi, Brad. I'm just fine. I have a favor to ask you. Tess and I need some help on accessing background information on Uncle Henry's story. Oh, that would be wonderful. Oh, and while I've got you, there's one other thing. Oh, that's right. You're a genius. Now, now, see if there's any connection to the guerrilla faction down there. Sendero Luminoso. This doesn't look like apartment hunting to me. Oh, I got to thinking when I left you, why upset your friend? This way I can access all the information you feed into your computer at work. Isn't it the greatest? Duggan had it sent over. Duggan? One call and he took care of everything. Look, I've already hooked into your office. I've been going through your files on Uncle You've Henry. You've been going through my files? Well, I thought since we're working on the same story together... Look, Melody, I think you'd better get one thing straight right now. We may be working on the same story, but my work is my work. And your work is what I tell you to do. Point taken. So, what did you find out about Tomasa Murillo? Nothing. Dead end. Thank <laughs> you. 
you managed to see much of Washington since you've been? There's mostly embassy work. Because I mean, there's so many other things to see. I don't believe it. She's got my dress on. Well, I'll be glad you didn't wear yours tonight. No, 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 no. That is my dress. Never mind the dress. How about who she's with? She's with your boss. Looks like little Miss Muffet's been sitting on somebody's tuffet. So, what's up with Doug and the Melody? Well, this has to just be business. Yes, I hope this is all right. This invitation came as a total surprise, and I didn't have anything of my own to wear. This was way in the back of your closet. I didn't think you'd mind. Well, of course not. But it's mine is yours. <laughs> and if it isn't, I'm sure it soon will be. Yes, honey. Melody has nothing but wonderful things to say about working with you. Uh, I knew I could count on you. And you, shall we mix? Oh, yes. Excuse us. Mm. Don't overreact. It's only a dress, and it looks much better on you. You are a dear man. Here's to your future. Oh. Speaking of my future, have you given any further consideration to the favor I asked you? Mm -hmm. Somewhat of a delicate situation. Tess carries a lot of weight at sea, and I suppose. I'm sure you'll work something out. Never off the clock, are you, Tess? Give me one good dinner party, and I'll tell you more about what's going on in this town than a hundred of your press briefings. Oh. <laughs> oh no offense. Uh -huh. <laughs> so answer my question. Who's Tomasa Maria? Well, off the top of my head, the name rings no bells. Well, he was at the White House last Wednesday, and his name wasn't on the president's published agenda for that day. Now, are there any bells ringing? <clears throat> if you're at a loss for words, Bernie, it means I'm on the right track. I think all this pomp and circumstance mixed with the bubbles in the champagne is going to your head. Is it? Mm. Well, let me tell you what I think. I think the president is using Murillo as a go-between to negotiate for Henry Dodd's release. That's what I think. It's a non-story. You're holding out on me, Bernie. Give it a rest. Enjoy the party. Excuse me. I was expecting to be in the doghouse with you tonight. You were? Why? For being late with your birthday present. Oh! Oh, Peter, it's beautiful. I love you, Peter, and I can't thank you enough. Well, I wouldn't be too sure about that.
What is it? Cinderella's glass coach from last night turned back into a pumpkin. I just hate the thought of you leaving me again. Two tickets to Spain. And in my resignation. And I was hoping that we might be able to go to Spain together. You willing to give it all up just like that? Yes, a lot of people in this business are successful, but damn few of them have relationships that work. We've done it all, Tess. We've seen it all. And contrary to what we journalists like to tell ourselves, the sun will still rise in the east and set in the west without us. I want us to lie in the sun and make love till we die of old age. Or happiness, or a combination of both. <laughs> I want us to record with our eyes and ears for our own consumption, not for 30 million faceless viewers. We deserve that. On TV news is a hungry beast, Tess. So somebody else feed it for a while. Peter, I want all those things for us, too, only not just now. There's one more rung on the ladder for me. And damn it, I want it because it's the highest I can go. I'm surprised you don't want it for me, too. Tess, what I do or I don't want for you is irrelevant. What's important is what you want for yourself. Peter, the timing is all wrong. And I'm beginning to wonder if the timing would ever be right. What if I don't use my ticket? Well, I'd be lying if I said I planned on living out the rest of my life alone. But I love you. I love you. And therein lies the tragedy. Well, I can see neither of us is going to convince the other right now. I'm going to be back here one last time next week to sign my final book contracts. Maybe we'll have sorted things out by then. I'm going to have to get ready for my flight. I I'll take you to the airport. Ah, uh, no. Why don't I just catch a cab, OK? You know, Tess, the uh, most important thing in life is love. Take away the money, take away the success. It's just about love. I've yet to hear a resume read at a funeral. but over here, so I thought I'd give you two some privacy. This Thank you. I think Tess is crazy. Yeah. I may be speaking out of turn, but I mean, she's had more success than she's probably ever dreamed of. I think she should start addressing what's missing in her private life. You do, do you? You're a very desirable man, Peter. And I think you're right. I think Tess should let somebody else feed the hungry beast for a while. Oh, like you, perhaps. Why not? Tess has had her day in the sun. Don't count on it. Tess, Brad Duggan. 
Hate to bother you on Sunday, but if you're there, can you pick up? Something important has come up I think you should know about. I'm here, Brad. Well, if it's that important, you can tell me on the phone. Oh, it's that important. Well, sure, why not? I can come up to New York. Let's say, um, 2 o'clock tomorrow? Great. Christine? Guess what? Duggan just called and wants me to come up to New York tomorrow. Uh-huh. That's exactly what I'm thinking. The next time you see me, you'll be looking at Dan Rather in a skirt. <laughs> yeah. You look beautiful, Tess. Oh, thank you. Want some coffee? Uh, please, yes. Sugar and cream? Mm, black. Well, what's the good news? Who said anything about good news? Well, you said you had something important to talk to me about. Here you go. I'm not getting the anchor. Oh, it has nothing to do with that. Well, then how bad could it be? Did Hamlin wake up with regrets over doubling my salary? <laughs> this isn't about money. Well, then what in the hell is it about? Tess, wouldn't you say the most unattractive aspect of your job is being out in sub-zero weather at the crack of dawn doing stand-ups for the morning show? <laughs> well, actually, Brad, I, uh, I was thinking that I should demand that we film those segments from the coziness of my nice warm bed, yeah. <laughs> and you like this. You can stay in bed an hour or two extra every morning from now on. What are you, what are you talking about? We're going to give uh, Melody a shot at doing stand-ups. Are you serious? Well, the girl is a month out of doing field work for an affiliate. Since when does that qualify her to step into my shoes? Wait a minute, Tess. Nobody's stepping into your shoes. Nobody could. As a matter of fact, we went out of our way to rearrange schedules so you'd have more time to work on the Henry Dodd story. To be quite honest, I thought you'd thank me for this. Oh, so this was all done for my benefit. I've been in this business a long time, Duggan. I'm not an idiot. Well, can they do this to me? Taz, calm down. Taz, how long have we known each other? Too long. Can they do this to me? We have weathered all kinds of other crises. We've made them work for us, Well, right? and... Listen, you've got a personal services contract. You, if they want you to stand and stare at the Statue of Liberty till she moves, they can do it. Oh! But that's not the point. The point is you've got a wonderful opportunity here, Tess. You're going to be full-time on the Dodd story. You're going to have a nice, juicy set piece on the evening news every single night. Most journalists would kill for that kind of exposure. Am I right? Come on, am I right? Maybe. You see, we're making adversity work for us. Ah, you admit it's adversity. That's not at all what I mean. You're the one that thinks it's adversity. How will this affect the anchor slot? Tess, don't get paranoid. Nothing's changed on that. Paranoid? Half my airtime's taken away. What? <laughs> they're demoting me to promote me. Listen, maybe they're experimenting. Maybe they just think their demographics show that Melody plays to the 18 to 35 age group a little better. I mean, you know that's who the advertisers are always trying to reach. Just like that overnight? Yesterday I'm acceptable, and today I make people gag on their bacon and eggs? Tess, don't do this to yourself. Come on, it happens all the time. As though that counts for anything. Melody has Duggan's ear. I've seen proof positive of it. The home computers, the embassy reception. I know she's behind this. Come on, Melody's not a bad kid. Now, why are you trying to make her out to be such a heavy? You know Melody? You're representing her, aren't you? Tess, you crying? Well, of course I'm crying. I'm human. This may come as news to you, Alan, but I have feelings. I mean, when I... when I... report heartbreak and misery, I have a lump the size of a golf ball in my throat. 
but I ignore it because I am getting paid to do that. It is my job. But there are no cameras rolling now, Alan. And I'm crying. Yeah, I'm crying real tears. Tess, you've given a lot of kids breaking into the business a leg up. Now, come on, what is so different now? None of them have tried to scalp me in the process, Alan. <laughs> You're acting crazy. I told you I was looking for a place. Oh, but you didn't tell me everything, did you? I can't believe I didn't see it coming. Oh, you don't shake a hand without picking a pocket. You don't make one move or befriend one person unless they can do something for you. What is so wrong with wanting to make something of myself? What's wrong are the methods you're using to get there. Oh, don't preach, Tess. Don't judge me because I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Things have changed. Maybe you don't have it anymore. Maybe time has passed you by. So just step over the bodies on the way up, huh? As a researcher at the Washington Bureau, she needs a roommate. I don't need your help. I know someone who'd be real happy to have me as a roommate. Does this mean I need to get another key made? You want some more fried rice? Yes, please. Just a little. Thanks. Well, I have to hand it to Melody. She slipped that knife in so smoothly, I never even felt it go in. I think you did the right thing throwing her out. <laughs> Maybe I'm losing my edge. You know, ten years ago, this never would have happened. I would have heard warning bells go off in my head. Ten years ago, you were so intent on your career, you didn't see your own marriage going bad. Why is it men think that women can either have a career or a relationship? Right. How many men would pass up a promotion because it interferes with their relationship? You never did get over Kevin, did you? I thought he was the one. I would have put money on it. I heard he finally got married. No. They're expecting their first child. Peter wants me to go to Spain with him. I have until Easter to make up my mind. He's tired of living out of a suitcase. He's got chapter one of the great American novel, and uh, he thinks I've got a book in me, too. There comes a time when we have to stop covering everybody else's life and live our own. Mm. The hard part is knowing when it's the right time. I'm gonna miss you this weekend. Maybe I should come to New York with you. Oh, well, we won't have any time to play. I'll be running around covering Talbakov's visit. All right, then I'll buy you lunch and drive you to the airport. Oh, my own personal chauffeur? I could get used to this.
Dwight? Yeah, O'Brien here. Hey, listen, can you do me a favor? I'm running out of material on the Henry Dodd story. And I, uh, I wondered if you could come up with a new angle for me. I'll check it. Can you hold? Yeah, I'll hold. The White House. Yesterday's Senate subcommittee hearing on the use of drugs in America received a surprise visitor when the president himself appeared to present his agenda, which endorses the prosecution of drug users as well as drug pushers. Tess, you there? Melody Shepard, CNS News, the White House. I'm here, shoot. Tess, there's not much new here, and it's pretty dry. Just educational background and work history. No living relatives, no interesting personal No living stuff. relatives? None listed. That's odd. Listen, can you do a family check on a Melody Shepherd? S H E P H E R D. Melody Shepherd's parents are deceased. No brothers, no sisters. She lists next of kin, though not blood related, as one Viola Hubble. Do you have an address? 2241 Jefferson Road, Richmond, Virginia. That do it? Thanks, Dwight. You're the best. I'm gonna have it done by Friday. I think. Good, I hope. Good. <laughs> so, uh, how does Andrew feel about you throwing Melody out? Are you kidding? She ran straight into his arms. He's in seventh heaven. You mean they're living together? Hmm, apparently in bliss. You know, I just... I find it so hard to believe that Melody is Henry's niece. Hmm. Could you do me a huge favor? Sure. I've been so busy on this Mario story, I haven't had a chance to, uh, Check out Melody. You know, we should really think about getting a move on with traffic. Mm -hmm. We're cutting it real close. There's no more bikes. So good. Your flight. Do you mind a ride to Richmond? No. Viola Hubble. Viola Hubble. Yeah, the oldest and dearest family friend. Right. See what she has to say about Melody. Okay. I'll go down this afternoon. Thanks. No problem. Well? Hi. Yeah, I've been meaning to... Andrew. I can't afford to miss this plane. Well, I'll, I'll call you. Miss Benefit, I hope I've been some help to you for your story on Melody. Yes, uh, she was such a lovely, lovely child. Well, you have. You really have, Mrs. Hubble. You know, there's one more thing before I forget. How did Melody feel about Henry Dodds? Oh, that poor man. Oh, why, she just adored him. As a matter of fact, I, I have a picture of them together. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. To Melody, University of Virginia Journalism Award winner. It was a pleasure to meet you and present you with this prestigious award. Good luck with your career. Henry Dodds. Oh, Melody was a big fan of Mr. Dodds. I know she intended to look him up when she went to Washington. They aren't related? Oh, good heavens, no. Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> Tess, listen, are you sitting down? Von England's Parliament. From New York, there is word that due to the sudden outbreak of violence in the Baltic states, Ambassador Talbakov has canceled his speech before the United Nations so he can remain in his homeland and help quell this latest uprising. Bruce Jenkins has sports, and we go to him now on the West Coast where he has today's sports roundup. 
Hi, sports fans. In the NHL, only two games were played. The Kings defeated Edmonton 6-4, while the Capitals prevailed over Boston 4-2. In NBA basketball action, Sacramento was defeated Hi. by the Los Angeles Lakers. Hi, how often leave from New York? Boston overwhelmed New York 123-86. Chicago's Bulls rallied by the Philadelphia I ordered room service. I thought it'd be fun to stay in tonight. Just a minute. Heard Tablecop's speech was canceled. Thought I'd surprise you. <sighs> you want to take an invite me in? Oh, Andrew, this is a bad time. I, I was going to catch up on some work. Andrew, please. When you get back, I want your things out of my apartment. Andrew, stop. You're the only one who means anything to me. Honey, come back to bed. You only want to see this old body fall apart, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. You are really quite shameless, you know that. Mm, that's why you like me. Mm. I love your beautiful skin. Oh, well, I take care of it. With all the makeup and camera lights, by the time a woman is 40, if she's not careful, she looks 100 on camera. I don't intend to end up a repulsive old prone. I don't want you to think I was talking about Des. My darling, what makes a woman attractive is more than beauty. Style. Tess has it. <laughs> yes, but the way she operates is so passe. I'm helping her investigate Uncle Henry's story. It's all legwork and watching and waiting. Tell me, how would you go about it? Well, I've been getting some pretty terrific quotes by using my sweet southern charm. But I could get anybody to do whatever I want. With a bit of promise and a little suggestion. I bet you can. When will I see you in Washington? When will you see me in Washington? Tell you what I want you to do. What? I want you to save that sweet southern charm. Forgetting all those great quotes. And we will keep our relationship strictly professional. Okay. I'm gonna have to run six miles to burn off that breakfast. <laughs> I like cooking for you. Next time, oatmeal. No thanks. Your oatmeal always has lumps. <laughs> Mom, I can feel like such a fool. I really liked her. Don't be so hard on yourself, Andrew. You know, I really thought she was pretty terrific when I first met her. Well, you saw through her before I did. I knew you had eyes in the back of your head when I was a kid. No, I've just been around a little while longer and I've been burned. You're still very trusting. So you think there's hope I'll outgrow it? <laughs> Don't you dare.
Mr. Murillo, I know who you are and why you're here. What can you tell me about the Henry Dodd situation? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Everyone knows you're the middleman between your government and the guerrilla faction. Now, why else would you be sitting down to tea with the President of the United States unless something's going on? Come on. Your facts have to be better than my guesses. So here's what I'm going to go with. Tomasa Murillo is negotiating with Antonio's faction. There's going to be an Easter release of Henry Dodds as a goodwill gesture by the guerrillas. Now I've got confirmation straight from Murillo himself. I'm not asking you to back me up. I'm asking if you want to add anything to this. Why don't I have somebody get back to you on that? Good. I'll be in my office. Yes, O'Brien. Oh, yes, I'll hold for the president. Will you excuse me, please? Hello, Mr. President. How are you, sir? I understand, Mr. President. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I would never do anything to endanger Henry's life. Absolutely. In that case, I'll kill the story. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Time is Peter's flight. Two o'clock. You're getting pretty close to the end of that gangplank test. You gonna use that second ticket, go to Spain, or what? I always used to pride myself on my ability to make decisions. Well, look who's paying a house call. Gee, looks like one of us is gonna have to stay after school. Would you excuse us for a minute, Christine? I guess it's you. What's wrong? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, my Spanish is a little rusty. Recognize your name when you see it? The full story of Henry Dodd's release. Oh, you tell me. Well, this absolutely did not come from me. This will be the front page story in this afternoon's edition of El Diario in Lima. Needless to say, Juan Salazar Antonio is not happy. He has canceled the release of Henry Dodds. Why? I was told they'd all come to an agreement. Antonio is a man with a very large ego. As the opposition candidate, he felt it was his right to make the announcement. He needed that to make points, to deal from a position of strength, to prove he was in control. I gave you my word, Bernie. I gave the president my word. I sat on that story so it wouldn't endanger Henry's life. Well, 
Whoever did this obviously didn't share your concern. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what if Antonio could still make that announcement? Make it before anybody else? What are you getting at? El Dario is an afternoon paper. It won't go to press for a couple more hours. Get Antonio on the phone. I'll put him on the air. We'll do the lead-in from here with a voiceover graphic remote. He can tell the whole damn world directly. You can do this. It's done. Christine! The following is a CNS News special report. This is Tess O'Brien reporting live from the White House press room with a CNS special report regarding the fate of kidnapped journalist Henry Dodds. We go live via telephone hookup to Lima, Peru. The next voice you hear will be that of Juan Salazar Antonio, the candidate for the People's Liberation Party. Antonio has been in constant contact and negotiations with the guerrillas. He has an announcement to make. Citizens of the United States of America, I come to you today with an announcement that I sincerely hope will lead to a spirit of cooperation between your country and mine. In the past, it is true that we have had our political differences. But it is time for a new rethinking on both sides. Therefore, as leader of the People's Liberation Party, I have prevailed on the guerrillas in a gesture of goodwill to release the American journalist Henry Dodds. <laughs> As you can see from the reaction of my colleagues here in the White House press room, <laughs> we're all very excited and thrilled for Henry. And undoubtedly, the one person most relieved in this room is our own Melody Shepard, who broadcasts for the CNS Morning Show. Melody, I understand you have a special relationship with Henry Dodds. How do you feel about this wonderful news? Nobody could be happier about such an unexpected turn of affairs. Stay tuned to CNS for further updates on this incredible story. Tess, Brad Duggan on the line. Hi, Brad. Oh, Brian, that was a first-rate piece of journalism. We'll talk about this on the way down to Lima. I'm flying down to pick up Henry, and I want you and Melody with me. I'll tell her. Melody, Duggan's flying in from New York in the corporate jet on his way to pick up Henry. He wants us with him. We're supposed to meet him in Dulles in two hours. Oh, what's the matter, Melody? You don't look like it feels so good. I have an upset stomach. Um, you go ahead. I'll meet you at the airport. Good news for you. Crookshank told me he is retiring. The anchor job is yours. And Henry's release gives us a terrific opportunity. We can make an event out of this. Your first big story is an anchor. Arriving passenger with no the car, please go to the customs office on level two. I can't do it. What are you talking about you can't do it? It's what you work for. You deserve it. I can't do it. Brad, I, I'm very grateful, but the timing isn't right. I have another plane to catch. Your attention, please. Mr. Arthur Luger, please pick up a white courtesy phone, please. Oh. Feeling any better? Not much. I know you leaked that story about Henry. I don't know what you're talking I'll come about. come off it, Melody. You were wrong about what it took to get to the top. You didn't need to use all your lies and manipulations. You're smart. 
You would have made it. But you just didn't want to work for it. But Tess, everything's worked out for the best. Henry's safe and you're a hero. Do you want to say anything about this? It could end my career. Oh, I think meeting your Uncle Henry should take care of that. Adios, honey. emotion over me. Oh. You're not on the plane. You're not on the plane. Oh. Spain wouldn't be any good without you. After my big speech about love being the most important thing in life, uh, I realized that I wasn't even listening to my own words if I chose Spain over you. You're really not going. I can write quite comfortably in your den. What about the beach, the sun? I'll buy a sun lamp. Oh. oh, Peter, they offered me the anchor. Ah, then your life is damn near perfect, isn't it? I told Doug and I couldn't take it. Well, now you can tell him that you can take it. Well, you know, I, I could take it for just one year and get it out of my system and then, and then uh, uh, drop out of it. Look at you, you're already beginning to sound just like Crookshank. No, 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 I mean it. One year. One year is oh, enough. Yes, yes. And I'll step down. Oh, yes, and then it'll be two years. No, 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 no